G'day guys. Today I'm down on the south coast of New South Wales, fishing with a legend of the Australian fishing scene, Steve Starling, chasing southern black brim. Starlow has made a couple of great short videos about chasing these monsters on fly, and I'm really keen to give it a go. When you fish a spot regularly, you get to know the finer details of what makes it tick. The wind is blowing today, making things a bit challenging, but have a listen to how well Starlow has these fish and this fishery sussed out. It's a real eye-opener. It's quite interesting when you do it in the lakes in Tassie and then you pull it in, there's often nymphs and things caught in it. It's quite an interesting way of sort of yeah. surveying what's, uh, what's yeah. drifting about. It's like a little sane. Yeah. <laughs> This particular fishery is what's known as an icol. It's a coastal saltwater lagoon that only occasionally opens to the ocean after a flood event. So it's quite different to fishing a tidal estuary which is open to the sea. There's no tidal movement and no migration between the ocean and the estuary unless the mouth of the lagoon is open. Is there any big holes? Deep holes no. in the lake? Pretty shallow. Yeah, it's all pretty flat on the edge of the sea. So the factors that affect the fishing here are quite different to what I'm used to in Sydney. If you want to understand a fishery like this, you need to start by understanding the whole waterway first and how it affects the fish. Narrow really beans, your closest to an icon like this, yeah. yeah. Although it seems to open up a bit more This has just got no catchment. That little creek is only a couple of kilometres long, so yeah. basically if we have four inches of rain here, this comes up about six inches, that's about it, you know, so it takes a lot of rain and then big seas to, to open it. Yeah, just sort of try the edge of that flat as we come down on the snag. I'm trying to remember if there's any more timber out. There's a whole line of it, but I think that bit might be the last of it. You can see them in here. We've moved here to a small creek mouth that has a channel running out into the flats that's just slightly deeper than the surrounding water. Sometimes these small variations in depth are enough to attract and hold fish, but what we're primarily going to target is the fallen timber that's washed down to the edge of the channel in a flood. Brim tend to be a structure-oriented species, so when they're not out hunting for food in open water, you'll find them around some kind of structure they can use for cover and as an ambush point. I don't know. Oh yeah, I think there's a bit sticking up. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, do that. If there's a fish there, it'd probably be right underneath it. But I reckon there's a bit more structure here at um, 10 o'clock. Yep, yep. I'd, I'd stick one on that. There's a little bit more water around it. When you're fishing for brim on structure, one of the keys to success is to try to maximise the time your fly is in the strike zone, those first few metres around the structure. Brim can hit a fly almost instantly sometimes if you land it in the right spot, on the drop, or other times you might need to entice a strike. Regardless of which it is, you have to watch your fly line like a hawk for any sign of movement that might indicate a take. Wind, waves, and a moving boat can make this more of a challenge, so in these situations, you're watching for the line to tighten faster than normal. Is that a fish? You beauty! <laughs> I saw that line tighten, I thought, is that a snake? Well, that's a fish! He should be right now, he's come out. <laughs> that's not bad out of that depth of water in uh, this rock. Yeah. Conditions. He's not a bad one. Yeah, he's not a bad one. Yeah, he's not a bad one. Well done. That's on your yep. top of the stinger? Yep. Shouldn't be any bad stuff out here. Yeah, it's got some weight. Probably be your PV black. <laughs> be my first black. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it'll definitely be your PV black. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's a 
Tracker. <laughs> Thanks, boys. <laughs> what a beautiful fish. Seven before the day's out. <laughs> One with its own postcode. Yes. Right. I think I'll clear up this and we'll, we'll know what we're doing now. Yeah. Because there's a um there's a fence line over here yeah. as well. Oh. We might let that snag just have a rest. He won't be on his own in there. There'll probably be three or four fish yeah. sitting under there, but we'll let it have a little bit of a break. Alright. We'll go and try this fence line. Okay. The pressure is off. That's a plan. <laughs> Oh, well, they like those flies, mate. Yeah, I thought that'd be a good trip because I sort of got it long ways along the yeah. length of the snag. Yeah, yep. Really got to watch that line. Oh, yeah. 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 On the fly. Yeah, so just look out there on those sand patches in particular and you might see a big, big blink. Hmm. That was definitely a brim. I'd shoot in here too. Yes, yeah, mullet. Yeah, I'd shoot a couple down this way. Just yeah, get out, just out here in the open. Just use the wind and make a big, make a big cast. Just cover water that we haven't got. To. Yeah, nice. What size do you reckon the prawns are in here mostly? Um, probably quite large. At the moment, few and large, I suspect, because it hasn't been open for a while. But there'd be those greasy backs in here too that can actually breed in um, estuary conditions, and they're quite a small. Yeah. Okay, on that um, fence post, yep. Yeah, I reckon so. Yeah. Because if there's any inside, I'll probably see them. Whereas out there, they could be. Yeah, that's that's that sort of zone, just where you sort of can't quite see the bottom. Sometimes it'll yeah sniff along there. Down in Malakuda, you fish a lot of areas like this, and they they mud. I haven't seen them do it in here, but oh, yeah. six or eight of them will be digging, and you'll just see a plume of mud with like tails and that sticking out. It's bloody awesome. <laughs> I've never fly fished it, like, but it'd be like so good to fly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's interesting, isn't it? Often on water that hasn't got a lot of structure, it can it can be a bit easier because you know they're going to be on exactly. that structure. They haven't got too much to do it. It's what I always found hard about Murray cod fishing at Lake Mulwala. It's just so much stuff. Yeah. Where do you start? Yeah, all the bass rivers are like that too. Mm. There's just so much good water. You have to become good then at sort of identifying the better structure. You know, at Mole Whaler it's all yeah. about horizontal um, timber, yeah. the lay downs and stuff. You can just about rule out all the vertical stuff. Yeah. Yeah, well that log back there wouldn't have had wouldn't have had much water on it. Yeah. About three feet? At the most. Yeah. But the big thing was you had that cover over the top, you know, with the, yeah. 
the horizontal cross. Yes. See, there's a muddy patch there, but that could have been a stick. There's quite a few stingrays in here. Yeah. Do you think there's a lot of food in here for the brim? Or I think is there it... is, yeah. yeah. A lot of just grazing food, I think, you know, shellfish and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. I don't think they have to work particularly hard for it. Yeah. They've, their teeth have quite ground down and they've often got scars and that, so I think they are crunching a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yep, that should get him out if there's one home, but I just don't think there's quite enough water and cover in there. Okay, 11 o'clock, yep. there's a log on the bottom. Ah, uh, yep. 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 About 40 metres? Yep. yep. Nice. See that other bit out from it, the waves are breaking on it a little bit. That ought to tell you if there's one home. Tickle it off, that's it, just let it sink there. Let's see if there's one on this next bit. I think that. Yeah, yeah, if there was one there that was going to eat, he would have eaten that. It's in the danger zone. Alright, try that root ball at the end. Yeah, that's not a bad zone out there because I think it'll be facing that way up into the wind. Yeah, let's just bring it past. Hit. Might have. Thought I saw a line move. Mm -hmm. It's where he should should be. Where you can see all that shelter and stuff on the bottom. Yeah. So they sit under. Bits like that. Yeah, like that in there. yeah, oh look, it goes right along. Yeah, he was sitting under that. Yeah, the absolutely. Very close to where I caught my PB black brim on fly, but the water was 60 centimetres deeper, probably. Yeah. It looks like it's got a reasonable amount of water on it. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the, and it extends a fair bit out to the left there as well. Yeah. So I think uh, there'll be fish on it, based on the fact that there was fish on that other one. Yeah. You'd never find this stuff without the one electronics, would you? Alright, so I want you to make... A... That nice long cast, sinking down, okay. stripping back. Right. Yep. This is not a, to the right. It's not a great snag, this one, but it does hold fish at times. That's about sort of 60 feet. Or yeah, you'd be you'd be you'd be, be coming across it for sure. What's the sink rate on those flies? You'd be getting down to that 1.6 pretty easily yeah, wouldn't it's you? Not, it's not too fast actually, I, I don't tend to heavily weight them. No. I think they fish better with the lighter weight. Yeah for sure. I have got, I have tied a few a little bit heavier if we need to get down. There is a, another spot we'll go to out here later, you'll probably need the heavier. Oh there's the log. So it's 12 meters. Yeah. So you might have to try, so make little, your next one a little bit more to the left. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It doesn't look like there's any fish. All right, so I want you to start throwing some casts. 
comfortable cast it's um, 1.7 meters deep oh yeah that's the snag okay so that gives you a pretty good indication that wasn't a particularly long cast okay 50 foot cast I guess, it's, so it's down along that line there that I'm on. This is the snag Joe's snapper came off. It's a pretty sizeable tree, it's like half the size of that uh, one that's out of the water. It's got a big a gnarly sort of uh, root ball at one end I think. And as the light levels drop like this and in the dirtier water they'll they'll scout out off it you know they won't be sitting right under it all the time mm, just that line move honey then should have had one by now Snag? Snag. <laughs> okay, well that's the line that blocks on. Yep. Not that far out either, is it? No, it's not. Do you mind busting him off? Yeah. Oh, well you know you're getting down anyway. Yeah. Alright, we'll go and try the deeper tree, I think. Dread to think how many rim I've pulled off this snag over the last seven or eight years. <laughs> Alright, which way is it? Uh, it's going to be due south of us, which is town, okay. right in the guts of the, the houses there. Yeah. Still a fairly long cast at the moment, but pull one out there because at this time of the night they'll come off of the, the snag. Yep, that's a nice line. Four brim, 12 metres out here. 15 metres now, that's where I'm going to hold us. Oh, that's one. There it goes. <laughs> That's a gnarly snag, so... Should be alright now, if he hasn't done you yet, I'm driving us off too. Going back to it. <laughs> yeah. I'd say you've got even here now. It's a different kind of brim fishing, isn't it? <laughs> Can you take it on the port? Um, I just started moving it again. I think I was sort of just about picking it up to pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's off in the way, isn't it? It is. I, I often find that they come when I'm doing something else, like trying to reposition the motor or something. Or adjusting your sunnies or... Yeah, yeah, the old reach down for the electric is a classic. Sorry about the boat, but we're on spot lock again now. That's a bit more like it. Yeah. You're going to be impressed by this fish. <laughs> That's a proper one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo 
Oh, even my eye can't stand it. Back to nice grip. <laughs> Oh, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. Pick that up and show the camera. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> a turkey. What a beast. What a beast. Woo. That is like a snapper, isn't it? on the lie detector. <laughs> I think so. Oh. No wonder he was bulldozering his way back. Yeah. Yes, it's a bit more like hooking a pinny than a brim, isn't it? <laughs> it's weird, a large bloody brim, you know, out here in the you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe it. Oh. 46. 46. <laughs> Earth on him. And they beef up between now and August, they, they put on even more weight. <laughs> that is a proper, <laughs> that is a proper one. Wow. Dwarfs the other, see what I mean about, <laughs> the other one seemed like a really nice brim. Yeah. <laughs> He's looking a bit worried now. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you, mate. <laughs> no worries. I, I'm most grateful uh, for that. That's by far the biggest brim I've ever caught. Oh, yeah. <laughs> most people don't see a brim like that in their life. <laughs> see when he got his head down and decided to swim back to the snag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he, he gave me a proper run there after a while after he woke up. Yeah. The bigger they are, the slower they... I, th I think they just don't know anything's wrong, you know. Yeah. They're forever chewing on things that are sharp and crabs that bite their lips and things. And I, I think the actual hook sticking in them doesn't worry them too much. It's when that force starts pulling them, starts pulling on them where yeah. they don't want to go. Yeah. And then they, their, their little brains start to realise that they're in strife. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's weird sort of when you're fishing and you're, you're not visually seeing the snag. No. Yeah, you're never sure if you're quite on the spot. No. Just gotta be patient and have faith, haven't you? That you that you're in the right spot. Indeed. What's my on? absolute my PB on any gear on on lure came off this snag. Yeah. Uh, it was 49 wow. to the tips and weighed 1.91 kilos. Oof. One of these days I'm going to crack the two. <laughs> crack the 50 and crack the two. 50. Yeah. Challenging in these conditions when the visibility is down a bit. Yeah, it's it's having confidence that a fish is going to find it mm. and eat it. You know. Mm. I reckon in, in these kind of conditions, a bigger, noisier fly is probably something that'll pull pulse fables. and push a little bit of water, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But it's amazing how they seem to find it. You know? I, I've caught brim on these at night. Yep. Pitch black. They still find it. Oh, I reckon I just had a bump. Gosh, it was so light though. Yep. Snag. That's it. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna fish the upper spot from this side, so you'll have to chuck into the wind. But we can get pretty close to it this time. If, if they're not, if you don't get one now. They they weren't there. They do move around a fair bit. They're, strange critters I wish I knew a bit more about them oh, this tree this tree in the deeper water I'm quite convinced it's a daytime hangout you know it's where they sit all day and then this time of the day they spread out and go and feed on the flats and stuff like that yeah because yeah and they may have vacated this already it's probably 25 litres no that's alright 24 now I'm sneaking in The odd, there's the odd fish kicking around out here to our left, 10, 11 metres out from us, so they might be starting to spread out a little bit. I wouldn't bother about casting at those, they keep casting up towards the structure. There's a multitude of reasons why Starlo is one of the most successful and respected anglers in the country. But the one that really struck me today was the sheer depth and breadth of his knowledge of the fishery. 
He has this ability to gather all of the relevant information, whether it's understanding the biology and habits of the fish, the hydrology and other factors that influence the water, his past experience and how the conditions affect the behaviour of the fish, and not least of all, his powers of observation on the water. All of this knowledge coalesces into a strategy that's both effective and adaptable. If the average fisherman is someone who goes out hoping to catch whatever is around, Starlo is at the opposite end of the spectrum. Nothing's by chance. Everything is carefully considered and targeted. If there's one big thing to take away from that for me, it's this. We fly anglers can get all caught up sometimes with gear, flies, casting and so on. The fact is though, that 90% of success is just in understanding and finding the fish. Once you have that figured out, fly fishing can be adapted to most situations. You've got to earn that knowledge, both through study and through sheer time on the water and powers of observation. You'd be too salty, look at that cold water. <laughs> 1. 1.74. 1.74. I'll give you 1.75 actually. <laughs> Grab him out again, just pop him back in the well for a second. Yeah. Okay, spear him in. All right. All right. Two beautiful, beautiful people playing here. Let's let these guys go. Oh, thanks so much, Steve. Hey, fish of fish of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. That's unreal. I've okay, never we were able to knock it over in the first afternoon. Yeah, I've never seen a brim that big <laughs> in the flesh. How so. big are they? They're just oh. Oh, they're so impressive. Absolutely. It's funny, um, I looked at it for years before I realised, you know, I've heard whispers about big brim and yeah. I tried a couple of times. And actually, the, yeah, so I came out one day, <coughs> I didn't have a boat at the time, I had a canoe yeah. with an electric on it. Came over here and fished a few snags, fishing away. I put through a little hard body in, and as it came out, I saw this big shape just attached from the snag. <laughs> it was bigger than that. It was a whopper. And I did that. But then I just thought, you know, there's just a few in there. They're like dinosaurs. If you want to soak up some more of Starlo's vast knowledge of fishing, he's got a great website called Fishotopia. I'll put a link to it up at the top here. I highly suggest that you check it out if you want to take your fishing to the next level. It's a terrific resource. I had one of the best days fishing of my life. I caught the biggest brim that I'm ever likely to see, let alone catch. And I can't thank Starlo and his wife Joe enough for their generosity and hospitality.